In a previous project, I went to the hobby store and picked up some F-Class rocket motors to try launching a rocket made out of pool noodles. Now these motors are amazing, but the catch is they're $17 each. So in this project, let's see if we can use powdered sugar and kitty litter to make a homemade version that'll rocket up over 2,000 feet high and cost less than 50 cents to make. To start this project, we're going to need powdered sugar, potassium nitrate, and a cheap bag of kitty litter. We're also going to need 3 quarter inch PVC tubing and a 3 quarter inch oak dowel. This is schedule 40 PVC and you can see I've cut the tube into sections 5 inches long exactly. The dowel is twice as long as that and you can see if we push it inside the tube it's actually a pretty good fit. This will be a ramming rod and a template as well and the markings you see on the stick are designed to make the simplest form of an E45 equivalent rocket motor. The markings are actually in reverse order to how we're going to build it but you'll see why it needs to be that way in just a minute. All right, let's get ready to make the rocket fuel, and to start off, we're gonna need a small blender that we're not afraid to damage. I found this one at a local thrift shop for $5, and the first thing we have to do is measure out 65 grams of potassium nitrate. I typically get mine as a special brand of stump remover, and it's a pretty fine grain to begin with. But you can see that after blending it up for about 20 seconds, it becomes a fluffy white powder that looks a lot like powdered sugar. Now speaking of powdered sugar, we're going to need some of that next. So let's zero out our scale and add exactly 35 grams of sugar to the mix. At this point, the powder is a pyrotechnic composition that could ignite with too much heat. So instead of mixing this up with a blender, we're going to have to shake it by hand for about 3 minutes. This should give it enough time to blend completely, and that's important because we need this white mix to be as intimate as possible. Alright, our rocket fuel is finished, so let's transfer it to another container to free up the blender, because now it's time to bring out the kitty litter. This 7 pound bag was only 98 cents, and surprisingly, the cheap kind is the best kind because it doesn't have any fragrances or dyes added to it. It's just a big bag full of bentonite clay, which is probably why the stuff is as cheap as dirt. Alright, let's throw a handful of clay into the blender for 10 to 20 seconds so it grinds into a powder. Holding the blender at a bit of an angle helps mix it better and reduces the load on the motor as well. Now when it's time to remove the lid, it's important to wear a mask or do it outside because you can see the powder is so fine it escapes like a gas and it's not really good to breathe this stuff in. Okay, we've got everything we need so let's get to work putting it all together. Place one of the PVC casings on a slab of concrete and drop in a third of a tablespoon of kitty litter. Now let's make sure we keep the tube firmly on the concrete so the clay doesn't spill out the bottom. Then slide the oak ramming rod inside and smack the top firmly with a rubber mallet. It's going to need about 5 to 10 good wax to compact it as tight as we need it, and you can see it'll make a nice little clay plug at the bottom of the tube. Let's repeat this process two more times until the plug is 3 quarters of an inch thick, which you can see is conveniently indicated by the marking on the stick. If too much clay gets packed in, no worries, you can just twist the dowel around a few times to loosen the top layer, then pour out the extra clay until it lines up perfectly. At this point, we're ready to add the white mix. This stuff is extremely light and fluffy, so it's important to push the ramrod down very slowly. Once it's compacted by hand though, we can ram it with the mallet just like we did the clay until the rammed white mix lines up perfectly with the next marking. The last step for this simple motor is a kitty litter end cap. This will be 3 quarters of an inch thick as well, the same as the one we made before, but here you can see there's still little room left in the tube and you'll see what that's for in another project video. Ok, our rocket motor is just about finished, the only thing left to do is make the nozzle. For these motors, I use a 732 inch drill bit, which happens to be the exact length and width we need to turn this rammed powder tube into a core burning rocket. Now to gauge the depth on how far in to drill, we can use the markings on the ramrod to measure exactly where the white mix ends, then mark the drill bit at the point where it lines up with the clay. Now it's really important to drill this out very slowly and carefully, because remember, this is a rocket motor and you don't want to set it off by accident. I'm drilling mine out by hand, so it's easy to control any heat generated from the friction. When the marking on the bit lines up with the bottom of the casing, the rocket motor is finished and should look something like this. Now to test the power of these motors, I went way out into the desert, miles and miles away from any people, property, or anything flammable. When this one lit off, I was blown away by what it could do. The motor just shot up 2300 feet high, and of course if we've got rockets going that high, we're going to need a way to deploy some kind of a recovery system. So the next step is to give our rocket motors a built-in time delay and a parachute ejection charge. The 100 gram batch in this video is enough to make two E45 equivalent motors with about 20 grams of propellant left over, which is what I mix with baking soda to slow the burn and create a 5 second delay. So watch for those modifications in another video. 
Well, now you know how to repurpose some simple household items into powerful hobby rocket motors for less than 50 cents each. Just make sure you have the right permits, location, and common sense before you try launching them. Well, that's it for now. If you like this project, perhaps you like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. Hold on just a second. If you are even considering the thought of trying to build one of these, please promise me you'll do one thing first. Get on Google and do a search for local rocket clubs. They don't cost much and they'll have the best idea of how to keep you out of trouble with the FAA and make sure nobody gets hurt. Having said all that, I hope you felt the same excitement for this project that I did. I've spent four years playing with different variations of sugar motors to get to this point, so I'm super excited to finally be able to present this to you. Now going forward, you can expect to see a few more rocket-related videos, and then we're getting into metal melting projects, so please make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I'd really like to see you around for those project videos. I'll talk to you then.